I'm Rick Johansson and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I wanna show you how to create this neon effect pretty easily. We're gonna go over the basics first. You'll be surprised, or at least I was when I tried to break this down. This actually came in as a question from one of the comments. To make a neon effect that looks like one of these lightsabers or any type of text you create, it only takes these five colors or any five colors of a palette of this like. I'll actually put these two palettes into the description below if you wanna play off of this exact thing. So we're gonna make the word neon into neon, but before we do that, let's go over the concept of how to blend these colors so it creates something like this. All right, so here I have the blue lightsaber, and this is just a plain old white rectangle. I have it selected. If I pull up the fill and stroke menu, we'll be able to see how the gradient works. If you're new to Inkscape, on the fill and stroke, you can change the colors and I'm on the fill tab. Here I have flat color, so it's white. It could be any color you want. This one right next to it is called linear gradient. Now this shape over here actually is a rectangle just like that. I just extended it. And a linear gradient has all these different stops. So normally if I do a regular gradient, it's gonna go from full opacity to full transparency. You see, so this stop is where it begins. Do you see how it reflects over here? This is the transparency part. That's how gradient works, but you can add more stops inside of the gradient. See how I put that in there? And that's the concept we're gonna to use to make this blend to create a neon effect. Now this is just gonna be the concept of blending. We can't apply this to the actual text because it has to go out in every direction. But watch this. Let's start over, go back to a regular white rectangle. I'll make the rectangle bigger actually so it's easier to, to see this gradient in action. First of all, we select the object, hit linear gradient, defaults to from full opacity white to full transparency. Instead, we can change these colors. So on this side, the full opacity white, white is the right color. Let's move it out a little bit. That's going to be for the blade part. This gradient you'll see is just half of it, and I'll just duplicate it after. The next stop, double click, and you can add another color, be this one. Get that one pretty close, actually. Add a third, it could be this color. Fourth. And finally, at the end, it'll be this darker to make this haze. The default goes to full opacity. In a gradient, and actually in all of Inkscape, this A slider on the fill and stroke menu, A stands for alpha, which is the amount of opacity. So I want this one to go down to full transparency. You can tweak these a little bit to see exactly how you want it. Let's see how that looks. So I'll shrink it in. Draw it out, I'll duplicate it, switch directions, and put it together. And then if you like this version better, you just move them around, see the different amounts of um, blur you can create. Okay, you get the concept? So you can create this neon glow just with regular colors. I only did five here for simplicity. So let's go up here and now do it with text, a little bit more complicated. This right here, I actually, Stylize it a little bit more, the typeface, the font is called Freestyle Script if you're looking for it. There's an important step we have to do to make this work because we're going to be using a path effect for the actual neon look. So right now you can see these are still letters that we can change the, we can edit, okay? So it's actually still in text format. Well, this will not work in this case. So I actually stylize things a little bit here I added a connector. You can go with the default look of, of the word, but you still have to collect everything and then go to path, combine. What exactly did that do? It created this is now an object made by nodes that we can now do path effects on. So that's all you have to know for now. This version is the 
prettier version I created, so let's just go ahead and use this, but you can do anything that you feel like. The technique for today is we're going to create five different versions of this, each one slightly more offset, and that is so we can have the blur and that type of gradient go outwards evenly across everything. The linear gradient won't work. This is one way to do it. I'll make it smaller. Now you could do it all in place stacked, but for simplicity, I'm going to create five of them. And I can envision myself speeding this up. There we go. So each one with its corresponding color, and we're ready to go. These numbers are reminders for me on the amount of blur we're gonna apply after we do the offset. So the zero for the first one, that one's done. Here on the second one, we'll apply the path effect. You go to path, path effects. And the menu is blank. If you're new to Inkscape, you might wonder what's going on. Just hit the delta, and it will show all the different path effects. Or you can type in offset is what we want today. There it is. And nothing happens. So one of the parts of Inkscape that's not super intuitive is these path effects, sometimes they do nothing when you apply them. You actually need to go to the edit node tool, which is here, and we see our nodes. Now, one of these little diamonds is the node that will allow us to create the offset. It's real hard to tell. So what I do is I toggle it on and off. You can toggle here this eyeball. When I turn it off, it hides the path effect. I don't even know if you can see it, but let me zoom way in here. It's over here somewhere. This right there. Okay, so that might be something the developer could help. Maybe you could make, if you're listening, all the developers and people that make this platform free for us, could you make the path effect node different, different color, different size, anything? Because that's kind of awkward that we know that's the one. You get to drag this and it creates the offset. But before I do that, Control Z, put it back. There's a shortcut I want to show you. We would have to do this apply the path effect each time or Check this out. You might not know this trick. If I have it selected, I can go to Edit, Copy, or you can right-click Copy. Go to the other ones that you want to use. I, hold, I held Shift and collected all of them. Then go back to Path. You can paste the path effect. All right, now each of them, if I go to it, has offset. Just one little tiny time saver. So let's go ahead and go back now, where was that? It was up here somewhere. I'll keep it out like this. Go to the No tool. It must be this little guy. And bring it out a little bit. Just, we'll, we'll switch it up later. Go to this one, bring it out a little bit more than that. Go to this one, bring it out a little bit more than that. And this one goes out a lot. So there's your offsets. That's going to make it happen. Let's now add the blurs. So this one is five, path effect. Go to fill and stroke menu. There's fancier methods to do blur, but just down here, just type in five. There you go, very subtle. This one's 10. I came to these numbers through experimenting. That's the fun part. That's where, even though there's AI, they can do this in two seconds. It is kind of fun to enjoy the exercise here. This one's also 10, and this one's 20. Okay, so let's stack them, and then we can tweak to make sure it looks just right. If they're sliding underneath on hierarchy, move it to the top right here. We're gonna tweak it, we're gonna tweak it, but this is looking okay, even just with the random offset we did. Okay, see how that works? So. Let's, let's, we can clean this up. Let me show you how to clean it up. Isn't that amazing how just the colors create that look? So to tweak it now, we have to remember where that was. It was here somewhere. So the top one is fine. Let's go get the second one. Go to the node tool. Here is the offset, I think. Yeah, that's it. Let's bring that in a tiny bit. Go to the next one, bring that in. This guy. Does that one want to go in or out? Let's zoom out to see the last one. Oh, that does look good. 
Um, where does it go? Should we make it a white? No, no. The further out you go, it looks very bad. So maybe right in there. Let's see. You get the idea. So you can keep tweaking it to get it exactly the way that you want it, but that is one technique on how to make something with a neon effect. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and we'll see you next time.